Hi Bio4 and welcome to part two of the internal organs. I'm going to do a slight review of what we looked at in the last video and then move on to the liver. So here in this diagram of the regions of the small intestine we want to look at duodenum, jejunum, and ileum and these are colored slightly differently. So duodenum, just a small piece we can see there and then in jejunum be all this upper region that would then turn into ilium that would then continue on and come into the cecum. Okay, different way of looking at it. Again, you wouldn't know where the transition is from jejunum to ilium. That I would have to be very evident to show you that. This is definitely jejunum and this end is definitely ilium. Um, this is a nice diagram also because it shows things like the ileum coming into this region of the cecum. And look, it has a little entryway there. So that's a nice thing to see. And you can again see ascending colon, transverse colon, descending colon. And um, just the haustra uh, labeled for you. So this is a, a, a nice slide to be looking at, plus one more. And here is sort of a simplified drawing, but it has a nice picture again of the entryway to the cecum with the appendix, and then regions of the rectum and the anus. Uh, you've probably heard of sigmoidoscopies when they're looking for colon cancers. So a sigmoidoscopy, go to my pen, and this would just be a camera that would come up here and just look at this S sort of region. And so it just would be looking for any kind of growths here in the sigmoid colon. And that's because the majority of them are occurring in that region. A regular colonoscopy then goes how far? And this is what's alarming. His little camera is going to go all the way. It has to go past those colic flexures. So it's pretty amazing what can be done and how that camera uh, could go the whole way. Okay, so um, please practice those structures. And then we're going to move on um, uh, to the liver. Oh, this, I forgot this slide, has the epiploic appendages that I had drawn, drawn in from you, uh, for you in the last video. So these are just little extensions of fat that come off the large intestine, and they are epiploic appendages. Mouthful. And now we go on to the liver. So relative to the liver, our first bulleted structure is the falciform ligament. And that is a ligament here that is separating the lobes, the right from the left lobe. So right in there, all this is falciform ligament. And then the round ligament. So I'm going to separate these by a line. So here is the round ligament and the rest is the falciform ligament. These kind of come together a bit. One is much more ropey, hardened, the round ligament. Then you have the gallbladder, that on your list, and the common bile duct that's not visible on this, but we'll see it on the next slide. Okay, coming from the liver, the liver is manufacturing bile. So it will manufacture bile and it'll bring it down this hepatic duct, then into the pantry, into the reservoir of bile. And that reservoir is the gallbladder. Then when you eat a very fatty meal, the gallbladder will contract and out through the cystic duct, right? We had hepatic duct, cystic duct. They will join together. And being together in one is the common bile duct. Okay, and that's on your list, common bile duct. Now, where does that go? So if we need bile, where do we need it? So this is going to come down, notice, down through here, and it's going to end up in the duodenum. So this is where digestion of these fats is beginning. It's very important. So 
And the idea is to keep that reservoir close to that beginning portion of the small intestine in the duodenum. And that's where you're going to pump many enzymes and also this bile. Okay, so common bile duct, the one that's joining a duct that comes from the gallbladder and a duct that comes from the liver. It's a really nice diagram. And then down here, remember nestled in that spot there is the pancreas. Um, <clears throat> uh, the caudate lobe here, we can't really see it on this um, picture, so don't worry about it right now. I just wanted to make sure with this diagram that you had the common bile duct is the one that's joining both. Um, the hepatic portal vein we're not seeing and the inferior vena cava either, so I'd like you to skip those. Uh, hepatic vein also. So we're going to go to other organs. And here is a picture of the pancreas that I've been showing to you before nestled here around the duodenum, the 12 fingers, remember? And this is going to be the stomach right here. So it sort of borders that stomach. Um, here, this is the full picture. So the stomach is here and nestled here in the duodenum and under the stomach is the pancreas. And um, the spleen, before we move on, I want to show you on this picture too, duodenum, 12 fingers. So 12 fingers about ended about there. So this already we are calling the jejunum. It's already the jejunum. And here again is the emptying out of the, of the common bile duct. More pictures of the same. And now I wanted to show you the spleen. So the spleen is often confused with the kidney. You should not confuse that. Or with the pancreas. So the pancreas, right, is sitting here. This is pancreas. And the spleen is the upper region here of the stomach. And it's filtering all your blood. It's a blood filter. And the pancreas is a reservoir for enzymes and also insulin. There's the kidney. So don't confuse a reddish tissue of a kidney with a spleen. Spleen and kidney. Uh, the last one that you have on your list is the urinary bladder. So from the kidney, the filtered urine will descend down into the urinary bladder. And I'll show you that in a minute. So this picture is a nice picture to show you how kidneys are considered retroperitoneal. What that means is they're behind the peritoneum. Remember what that was? The parietal peritoneum is the one that is lining the abdominal region. So you would have to cut through here, rip this, in order to get to the location of the kidney. It sort of holds them in place. And the last one showing the urinary bladder. So we have the kidneys and ureters and urinary bladder. And that's the last slide. Thanks for listening and be sure to review these. Bye.